Uh, well, we're in the passage of Scripture tonight that is uh, really uh, intriguing, to say the least. Revelation chapter 17, and I want to read uh, the first seven verses of this so uh, you'll uh, understand at least where we're going and what uh, is being said here. And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vows, and talked with me, saying, Come unto me, come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of that great whore that setteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman set upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of admonitions and filthiness for her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and the Admonition of the Earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered what great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which had hath the seven heads and ten horns. Almighty God, how we thank you and praise you for your wonderful, precious, holy word. I know that many people, when they read this, they're stunned. They don't know what to think. They don't know what to say. But it's plain what the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to get across to John, that a terrible time is coming when people will bleed just about anything and will be carried away because of their belief. Almighty God, I pray tonight that each one of us will stay with your precious word, that we'll follow the Lord Jesus Christ and not be led astray by anything that Satan might come up with. Keep us on the right track, Lord God. Help us to depend upon the Spirit to guide us and direct us as we travel down life's highway. Lord, I realize that there are many things that are lurking in the shadows out there, many that we don't know about, but yet we know enough, as we said this morning, to put our trust, our faith in Jesus Christ and to stay with him. And when we do, we'll never go wrong or astray. Father, forgive us. Guide us, direct us, and be with us every step of the way. And we pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, this, of course, has to do with the woman and her mysterious character. You know, every child of God needs to know that Satan is lurking out there. He is ready to pounce at any time, anywhere. He wants to take over. And he will do that unless God's people stand up and are counted and stay with the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that we, you know, we need to pray like we have never prayed before. We need to be soul winners. We need to get our loved ones out of the, or into the ark of safe, safety. We need to prepare our loved ones for the things that are coming. As Christians, listen to me now, as Christians, we cannot afford to be ignorant. You know, we may think things are coming apart, but they're not. I know, you know, we can't hear people talk about, oh, well, the United States is going down the tubes, all of these things. No, listen to me now. 
Everything is fitting right into the socket of prophecy. Everything. You know, and Revelation 17 is about a time, of course, called the Great Tribulation. The church, the bride of Christ is gone, but now you're going to find that the false bride shows herself. The scarlet harlot. Now I know that you've heard probably many sermons about the scarlet harlot. But we want to make absolutely sure that we understand exactly what this is all about. Women in the Bible are always considered a symbol of religion, whether it's good or bad. The church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is called the bride of Christ. It's his bride. Now, the mother of prostitutes represents a worldwide religion. And by the way, you can see that coming. It's actually the anti-church. You know, uh, Satan is anti-God. We have the anti-Christ. The false prophet is the anti-Holy Spirit. And this, of course, is the anti-church. This false, false religion is the anti-church. Now, the mo mother of prostitutes here represents this worldwide religion that is coming, going to take place. And she will seduce all nations. If you don't believe that, you need to read some of the things that's happening in the United Nations today. Now, God's word is clear. If you flirt with a harlot, the harlot world, you become an enemy of the bridegroom. James 4.4 4 says, Don't you know that the friendship of, the, of this world is hostility toward God? So, whoever wants to be of the world's friend, you become an enemy of God. Boy, I'm telling you, that's, that's pretty strong, isn't it? So don't, please, don't go out there and flirt around with the things of this world because when you do, you become one of God's enemies. Now Babylon, you see here this, this word Babylon and we've talked about that before and we've heard about it before, but Babylon also stands for false religion. You know, Babylon is a uh, code word. How many of you, when you hear someone talk about Wall Street, what do you think about? You, you actually think about the street? No, you don't think about it. You think about money, don't you? Huh? How about Madison Avenue? It, it's a, huh? Stores. Yeah, merchandising, let me see. Broadway? Shows. Shows, see? That's Babylon. Babylon is just a code word for false, false religion. And you see it always in many times. You remember in Daniel 2, 2? Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he summons all the priests and the mediums and sorcerers and Chaldeans and anybody else I guess he could get to come and interpret the dream for him. They couldn't do it. It was only the man of God who could interpret the dream for him. Now, these were men and women of false religion. They, you know, they had the world fooled at that time that they could do anything and what have you, but they could not do what only God could do, and that was interpret the dream that had been given to Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, not today. I got to say this, but today the ghost of Babylon haunts the world. Nobody says the wine of her sexual immorality. This was a this wine was bottled centuries and centuries ago, but today I want to tell you many people are still drinking of it. What is this wine? Well, astrology. Billions of people in this whole world today practice astrology. Many Americans, oh, you wouldn't, 
Listen to me now. If you have a horoscope, get rid of that thing. Don't keep it around. You hear people say, well, I know it's not real. I'm just playing around with it. Gee whiz. That's kind of like a married man flirting with some woman that's not his wife, isn't it? I'm just playing around here. Well, don't do it. Get rid of that thing. Well, all of you got one. I can see that. <laughs> Get rid of it. Do something with it. Well, you know, it, it's so important. Now, what in verse 5 talks about our mischievous children. And this is very interesting. And up on her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and the Abomination of the Earth. Well, what about her children? She, this woman is the mother of harlots. She has taught her daughters how to prostitute themselves, too. Who are some of these? Now, I, I know we're going to talk about some things here that uh, you probably say, why is he talking about all that? But it's very, very important. Listen. Some of these harlots. Who are they? Well, they're Satan worshippers. They're New Agers, Mother Earth worshipers, Globalism, Hinduism, Islam, Apostate Christianity. All of these are daughters of a false religion. Now I want to just take one of those and look at tonight. New Agers. How many of you know what New Agers are? You hear it all the time, talk about it? Yeah. I listen, their movement, the New Age movement has, uh, uh, if I don't pronounce all these right, you'll forgive me, won't you? Uh, Prosology, pro academies, pal academies, human potential educators, advocates, goddesses worship, goddess worship, reincarnationists, astrologists, and more and more. You could go on and on. One of the leaders, listen, one of the leaders of the New Age movement said this, we honor the truth and the beauty of all world religions. Well, believing all has a seed of God, a kernel of the Spirit, and all that unites us. Boy, doesn't that sound beautiful? Wow. They also believe God has revealed himself in Jesus Christ but he has also revealed himself in Buddha, Karista, Mohammed, and a host of others. Now the fundamental philosophy behind the New Agers is this, Mother Earth. Not Father God. Mother Earth. Now the United Nations is brought into this too. Did you... Uh, understand where they at and what they're doing now. All of this is just simply bringing us to a worldwide religion. You know, it sounds good, doesn't it? Hey, let's all get together. We'll all sing those good old songs. We'll even get on the Jericho Road. We'll just move along and have a great time. Boy. I'm telling you, my friends, Satan is working overtime at that. I get all kind of mail asking me to come to this, come to that, do this, get involved in that. You know what? That's of Satan. I've told you before, I'm a Baptist. I've always been a Baptist. I've, I've been a Baptist and I leave those whole earth. Amen. Not because it's the best, but because... It stays with the Word of God and doesn't get off on everything else under the sun. And I'm telling you, that's where we need to be. It, it, it's so sad that someone, just one individual, can come along with something new and get people by the hundreds and thousands to follow them right down the road that Satan wants them to take. How sad it is. 
Now verse 7. I'm moving right along. Her murderous conduct. Well, verse 6, let me read that to you. He said, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Christ. You understand that, don't you? Christians are being killed worldwide today. More Christians have been killed in this past year than any time before. And persecuted and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Why are you marveling about that? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. Well, when John saw her, he marveled. He was astonished. He didn't know what to say. And if you're alive, listen to me, if you're alive during this time, this is a great tribulation time. You understand what we're, ta what we're talking about. If you are alive then, you'll be forced to believe in and bow down to the image of the beast. If you don't do that, you'll die. And that's happening in this world today. I just read in the news or in the paper or something where another 21 Coptic Christians over in Egypt were killed. You know, because just simply because they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, that's going to be in the tribulation. Well, dear friends, I hope you're not that you're not there. I hope that when Christ comes, you can go with Him, Amen. and you won't be there when all of this takes place. But I think we need to give some serious thought to what is taking place in this old world today. You know, I, you know, one of the things today, well, I got off of this, but one of the things that happened today is this thing of forced conversion. Well, I'm against it. I want you to know that. That was tried. Forced conversion was tried during the Crusades. It didn't work then. Won't work now. Islam, of course, today, it is forced conversion with them. They force people to become one of the followers of whatever group it might be of Islam. Force them to do it. Now, you know, here it is. I want the right to try and persuade people to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want that. But, with all my heart and soul, I risk, resist any kind of forced conversion. But you know what? I have seen that tried in different places. You know. Fact. I think I might have told you about the in a hospital room where these two individuals come in. A man is sick. His wife is standing by the bed. They take out their Bibles and they try to force this man to give his heart to Jesus. You don't have to do that. Let the Holy Spirit work through you. Let the Holy Spirit do whatever needs to be done. I want, I want the privilege of telling people about Jesus I want to be able to go out here in the highways and byways and witness, do all that. But I would never, never force someone to become a Christian. But yet, that's being done, and it's a sad, sad thing. And I pray that we never, never, never come to that uh, as Christians at any time, anywhere, you know. During the Great Tribulation period, though, you notice the earth will be drenched with blood. Well, it'll be drenched with blood by this scarlet harlot. And she will do whatever needs to be done, or false religion will, to, to force people to bow down and to worship Satan. Are the Antichrist or white, which is all basically the same thing. 
written by way of false religion. I don't know, but false religion has always produced much bloodshed. Always. Now here, here's the thing about it. We who are Christians, you're a child of God tonight, listen to me. You're in a vital relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not, listen, we do not ask someone to join a group or some movement. No. I would never ask you to join a certain group or some religious movement. But I will ask you many times to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Because that's what we're to do. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is our Lord. It's a personal thing. You accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. And when we do, you know what? You don't become part of some great movement or some something out there that people try to get you to join. You become, listen to me now, you become a part of the family of God. Oh, what a difference. I love that song we sing, you know. I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. <laughs> I am thankful tonight that I'm a part of the family of God. And I pray that you are too. Now, here's the thing about it. We'll look at this next week. But, you know, uh, this is a mystery. Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and oh, an admonition to this old earth. Now I must just stop right here and say to you, if you don't think a lot of this has already taken place, I think, I think you've got your blinders on your eyes or something. Because you can see it coming. People today would love really honestly, truly love for all of us to get together and saying, you know, they're on the Jericho Road or whatever it might be. Come together in sweet <laughs> fellowship. But you know what? That's exactly what Satan wants. I get interested sometimes in what I hear families say. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell my children what to do. Let them go their own way, make up their own mind. I'm telling you, when you do that, Satan is ready to pounce. You need to do everything that you can possibly do to warn your children of what's coming. Your children, your grandchildren, whatever it might be. And when you do, you'll find out that somewhere down the line, maybe not, not at that particular time, but somewhere, they'll say, I'm trusting Jesus. He's the only one. He's the way. Reggie this morning shared with me. He said, I want to tell you something. Been praying for my daughter. And she didn't seem to care or want to do anything. He said, you know what? I said, what? He said, she called this morning and said, Dad, I'm going to church. <laughs> Praise God. You know, that's it. Don't let all of these other things that come by the wayside carry you away. Tell your children about Jesus. You know, they may not go to church every Sunday or what have you, but if you give them the right indoctrination as to who Jesus is, then they won't get caught up in all these things we're talking about. Now I go back again to this thing of New Agers, astrology, and all that. I have never in my life understood why someone could take one of those charts or a Ouija board or something and base their life upon that. I cannot understand it. Take the Word of God. Read it. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. And then, my dear friends, you will be on the right track. And it'll be the right way. And it'll lead to the place you want to go.
Astrology won't take you there. None of that will take you there. The only one who will take you there is the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your trust in Him, your faith in Him, and you will be on the right road. Let us pray. Almighty God, how we thank you and how we praise you for this day in which you've given to us. This chapter of Scripture that we're looking at is very, very disturbing. But yet we know that even today, many of these things are coming. We can see it. We read about it. We hear it on the news. People just seemingly don't care. But if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and are led by the Holy Spirit, then we'll be on the right road. And that road will lead us to heaven and glory forever and ever in a place where there's no more tears no more graves on the hillside of glory <laughs> it'll be a wonderful glorious experience why would anyone want to trust in something else I don't know but Lord we know they do and it is our business to trust you and to tell them about Jesus and to pray <coughs> for them for we pray and we ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. We're going to